So it's actually been a while, but uh, we get to discuss um, Patrick Hoban as probably being revered as one of the best players in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh. Now, I've heard players argue that Joshua Schmidt is better, um, European-based player. Um, I really don't know much about him and his history in the game. I do know he's got a significant number of tops in Europe, and you do know that Europe ends up playing through their top cut. Um, the thing is, the American-based top cut in North America and Canada uh, was based on the principle that, you know, you have to be a relatively good player or, you know, the coin of the clan, the best of the best kind of thing um, in order to know, you know, how to draft and really demonstrate your player skills. Um, both Billy Brake and Patrick Hoban did excellent jobs of this. So have many of the past players. It also kind of comes down to what is going to be drafted in your plot as well, uh, but to a much lesser degree. Um, it's kind of like the skill level in Yu-Gi-Oh! It's like 5% and 95% luck. Uh, depending on, you know, how you choose to use this yeah, statistic. But, um, Holman's proven in some of his articles and his mindset and the way he chooses to do things. Um, you know, he doesn't play the best deck at the beginning of the format. He takes a pseudo deck to the format, uh, to the first event. Uh, players will copy the deck, and then during the next event, he'll build the deck to counteract that. And it's a very bold strategy because, you know, once again it comes down to the theory that 99% of the Yu-Gi-Oh players in the community are sheep. And it takes a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful advantage of that. If you guys really don't understand what I'm talking about, look at his deck list. Um, look at the beginning of the format and then look at the very next event that he goes to. Uh, the deck is very different uh, and the deck beats the previous deck that he had played 99% of the time. Um, this isn't without saying that he doesn't already have this knowledge built into him. He probably does. But he's proven time and time again that he's a pioneer and he can like, think ahead of the game. Now, I'm not trying to sugarcoat it and, you know, just be on the Patrick Open train. But the thing is, you know, a lot of the facts are there. The mindset that he gives off is really relevant um, to the game. And the way that he thinks, um, you know, always trying to get someone to play the lesser or better of the deck. That way people will copy it and then next event just unleash the better deck. Um, to get his win. Um, very, very systematic and very, very easy approach. And um, if you guys really haven't noticed that, you really should kind of sit down and think about it for a little bit. Because I think you'll be shocked when you realize it. Outside of that, um, just general mindsets. Uh, read into his articles. Understand the way that he thinks. Um, try to, I guess, be a open. It's the best way to put it. Um, there's not really much else I can sugarcoat on the rainbow train for this video, outside of the fact that he does have his mentalities. Um, there's a reason why he thinks he or thinks the way that he thinks, um, and other things like that. So, if you guys watch some interviews with him, I'd recommend doing so. Um, usually, very insightful. He's a pretty cool guy down to the core. But yeah, guys, um, leave a comment down below. Tell me what you guys think, and I'm out. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please thumbs up this video to show your support. And please check out Vancole 40 for Cardfight Vanguard, M. Cole Games for miscellaneous trading card games, and No Limit Gaming for a brand new series of Yu-Gi-Oh! videos. Thanks for watching.